Welcome to the Welsh Woodman Workshop and in tonight's project we're going to be tackling this large piece of spalted beech behind me and wood turning that into a large bowl and we might even get a platter out of this as well. It's one of the largest pieces of have had to chainsaw so far so I'm really looking forward to getting it mounted up to the lathe. So in order to tackle this beast I've got my Stella MS441 and I've refitted a brand new sort of 25 inch bar, the longest that this saw sort of takes. And I've got a ripping chain fitted rather than a cross cutting because we're going to be cutting in the direction of the grain. So this should help it flow through nice and easily. So safety first, we're going to put a powered respirator on protect our eyes and lungs and we're going to face this off with a bowl gouge so we're trying to get this top surface nice and flat and we can start shaping the sides round then. Now the bowl gouge I'm going to be using got a Celtic rind on there so I've got lots of bevel edges I can rub against when I come to do my cutting. So this ground angle there is my bevel edge I want that touching against the wood so as the wood's pushing against it it's going to cut along this cutting edge all around the profile. So I want to keep that contact the best I can. Now because this is very imbalanced, it's going to cut air log, air log. So we want to put the tool handle down. Now if I look down the side of the profile, I can see something called ghosting. I'll show you that with the camera. So you can see we're hitting air log, air log, air log. So I want to get that nice and flat and level before we move on to the next step. So we've got a nice flat bottom to work with, oh, almost, but we're going to be taking a little bit of that away anyway when we come to rounding the, the edges over. So we can start establishing a foot now, so the size of the, the base we want it to be. So I want to do a slight undercut before I start getting ready to put a foot in. Okay, establish my foot ring now. So that's going to be the, the, the bottom of the base. I can always come back and make this smaller if the proportions don't look right. But it's always good to start off with bigger rather than smaller. So I'm going to work around the corners now trying to get this rounded over. So nice light cuts and lots of bevel contact. Okay, the flute and the gouge. So this this little guy in here, that's the accelerator. So. The more you close the flute, the more shavings, the thicker shavings you're going to take off. The less you close the th flute, the thinner shavings you're going to take off. Let me just show you here, if I can zoom in. Flute open. Thin shaving. Right. So we're going to rotate the flute now so it's more closed. And we'll see the difference. We're getting larger shavings and taking a more aggressive cut.
Here's the profile of the bowl, haven't started sanding yet, but you can see by sharpening your tools to do a final cut, you get a really smooth sort of finish on your, and your cut, so you've got a tiny, tiny bit of tool marks there I'll have to sand out. But here's the overall profile, and when I'm turning, I'm constantly looking along this top edge. That gives me the shape or the profile of the bowl, rather than looking at the tool itself. Now, the uh, these beautiful sort of black and spongy sort of bits there, this is spalting, so essentially it's fungus growing through a tree, and this was the reason that this big tree was taken down, because that fungal rot, I think it was honey fungus uh, in that case. So it's gorgeous sort of black lines coming through. So I've got a mount in the other way. Now what I want to do is make sure my handle's down, because it's, it's easier, you don't get a catch that way. And I want to be cutting along that centre line. So you can see where the machine's off, along that centre line as I'm cutting. That's going to make your cuts nice and easy then. So you're not going to be cutting underneath the centre, with the bowls want to catch and drag your piece down. So you're better cutting over than, than under. Okay, I'm going to face off the top. So I'm going to put my handle, two handle down, close to my body. Be there nice and gently, take a light cut because it's out of balance. Do that chattering noise when we're hitting the air and the right piece. Right, so we're going to need to establish the wall thickness. I think with the size of this piece, a nice chunky wall would suit this nicely. I'm just going to do a bit of nice. So I've established that's going to be my thickness of my wall. There, so I'm going to be working back to that wall. So you'll start in the centre. Uh, if this was a thinner piece, so it wasn't so chunky, I'd probably have a, have a thinner wall and start from the outside in. So we're going to start in the centre today. I'm going to be drilling a hole, so raise my tool rest a little bit, with my bowl gouge to my required depth. This is a little tip I picked up from uh, Tobias K. It's a brilliant wood turner, a uh, special wood turner in the UK. And it does this with a lot of his um, bowls to get the depth. See how um, sort of mulchy that uh, spalted stuff is that we're going into? That's about right there. I don't want to go any deeper than that hole now. So that will stop me from going through the bottom. We can do the easy bit now and turn it into the centre. Okay, I'm going to show you my process of how I turn out the middle into the centre then. So I've got that drilled hole. I'm going to keep my handle down so it's entering the, the tool piece at like a 40 to 45 degree angle. And that just allows you to swing with your body a lot easier. I'm putting the tool close to my body. Move it to there so you can see. And I want to be touching on the bevel of the grind. All times touching the bevel. So I'm feeding in, twisting with my body. Feeding in. And each time we're taking a tiny tiny bit more off. And the tool we want to just push forward as you're doing this as it's starting the cut. A lot of my turner friends will do a little dig in as a security just in case this tool does want to go backwards and then they'll take off. So I've got constant bevel contact, cutting hill downhill all the times. So I'm starting to cut uphill like that. So towards me, I'm gonna pull cut. What can sometimes happen 
is as the bowl's spinning round, it's going to want to grab on that lower ring, pull it round, and bam, you have a, a nasty catch. So I tend to just always try and cut downhill to avoid that. If you want to avoid getting a flat bottom on your bowls, so you have to do that twist with your hips as you're, you're turning in. You can see, literally wanting to cut that tool. Because the tool is nice and close to my body, I can support it. So I could potentially just do a push cut with one hand for this entire bowl if needed. I prefer to have my hand over the top as like a little sleeve to allow the tool to slide backwards and forwards. And it allows you to put downwards pressure on that tool rest as well. Now this is a great opportunity to practice every single cut. So you want to try and make every cut the best you can and that's going to really help you then when you come to doing your finishing cuts. So the reason why some other people get catches as well is because the, uh, the the speed feed. So essentially they're, they're trying to move the tool all at the same speed. You have to remember if we, we imagine this bowl being like a running track we've got uh, athletes running around it. The centre of the bowl is going to be spinning a lot slower than the outside of the bowl. So if you think about it, you have you can sprint around the centre of the track quite quickly. If you're an athlete on the outside of the track, you've got to really, really sprint really fast to keep up with the same speed as the inside. So as you're feeding the bowl gouge in, you want to be taking that into consideration. So as you get towards the centre, you're going to want to slow down your feed ever so slightly, and that's going to get you a nice continuous smooth cut across the entire piece. Right. Another potential problem that people come into when they come to turning bowls is they'll try and turn with the uh, the tool far past the tool rest. Imagine my finger is the tool tool rest, and as soon as you start increasing the distance over the tool rest, if you imagine the the fulcrum point, so like a seesaw, the center of the seesaw, if you do get a grab, it's going to bam take the tool up. So you want to try and use physics in your favour, get the fulcrum point is close to the edge of the cutting tool as possible that's going to give you more stability and you're less likely to get a catch then and the easiest way to do that is turn your machine off with your straight tool rest then you can just angle them inward slightly like so and you should be able to work more than on that angle let's give this a go always give them a spin to make sure it's not touching anything. If you don't want shavings flying towards your face, I found this to be really useful. You still put downwards pressure on the, the tool to the tool post, but if you put your um, put your hands out like that without catching it in the bowl. Yep. Deflect all the shaving from not being in your face so onto the floor. I'm looking on that side of the bowl to see what my profile is. So even if I can't see the tool cutter, which I still can, so I always leave it a little bit like that, I can still see what I'm cutting from looking there. So on, on that part with my eye. Okay, so we can start working on the walls themselves. You want like an equal wall thickness throughout, really. That might be a little bit chunky. We're going to take a little tiny bit more off that. So I've just put on uh, one of the curved tool rests I have. I just have the luxury of having this, so 
might as well use it because it's quite a quite a large bowl and this will just help me just get the that curved profile I need to get into the bottom. So I've got the walls quite happy with the thickness all the way along. Nice smooth sort of transition there. We're going to be blending in now with the bottom. Okay, so we've got the profile of the inside of the bowl turned out. So feeling from the centre out to the edge. Nice smooth transition with the curve. Really glad I didn't choose to core out the centre of this as most of the inside was pretty pretty well upspalted so it would have been very difficult to get another bowl blank out of this. So as a result we've got a pile of shavings on the floor. So we're just going to sand up this now, nice and smooth. And in order to help me with sanding, I've got this orbital hand sander so it goes to your ear compressor and we're able to sand there all inside the bowl nice and quickly which reduces your time no one likes sanding so this makes it nice and easy to to do right we're just going to come back after sanding to apply our wax finish over the top so this is always the exciting bit and in the the finish so I'm just go with a, a nice paste wax uh, free wax the name of the uh, the make so it's like a, a nice cream almost, rather than a, a hard wax as such. But I tend to buy it in these bulk tins, because uh, they uh, work out cheaper for me doing these larger pieces and the amount I use, rather than buying the smaller tins. So we'll do a couple of coats of this, um, and what will happen with a spongier sort of spalting wood, wax is always hard to get in, so sometimes I like doing an oil finish over the top of it but um, I find it just absorbs, it just sucks in the, the oil whereas the wax sort of sits on top a little bit more um, and because this is a tiny tiny bit green, it's not fully seasoned even though it's fairly dry, you can still feel some moisture in it uh, I haven't put a sanding sealer on as I'm going to let this wax sort of seal it in slightly and I can always add more wax on then if I need to or buff it up later on so quite a large bowl in the end it turns out and, uh, and sort of you can see how it would sit on the table so we've got that slight foot that's been undercut so it'll sit flat curved into the edges then into the, the bowl itself and I think the spalting in this bowl really brings it out I think if it had been plain it'd look quite boring uh, with, without this so quite happy with it overall thank you so much for watching hope you've really enjoyed tonight's project if you have please consider supporting me and subscribing to my channel by hitting the link there as that's really going to help me out in getting more videos like this your way so i hope you have a great night